Chapter 1 True love no longer existed. If Maddie Palmer hadn't known that before tonight, she was certain now. She pushed a sweaty lock of milk chocolate hair from her face and tapped her foot on the brick sidewalk outside of what, earlier this morning, she'd hoped would be a nice restaurant. Instead, her self-proclaimed foodie date had invited her to a two-star dive at best. Heaving a sigh, she kept her back to the rundown exterior of the crab shack and watched the little blue dot that indicated the current location of her rideshare. Good thing she'd insisted on meeting Mr. Wrong at the restaurant. Too bad she'd let her friend Darla borrow her car. She swiped off the app and pressed the green talk bubble for messages. She tapped Darla's name, and her thumbs pecked out a quick text. Get everything worked out? Yeah, all good. Just parked your car. Keys in the usual. Thanks. Shouldn't you be paying attention to your date? Date? Over. Bummer. They talk about the details later. She pulled up the rideshare app. What in the world was taking this guy so long? Her phone dinged again. So much for online dating? Maddie withheld a snort. If Darla only knew. A last-ditch resort. She hadn't really expected to find love online any more than she'd expected to find a platinum record bearing her name hanging on her wall. But really, did no decent men exist anymore? Never again. From now on, I meet creeps before I agree to have dinner with them. Ouch. Dish over brunch tomorrow? Can't. Anniversary party for my grandparents. Supper Sunday? You got it. Yep. No more online dating. Tonight's selection from the loser menu featured a handsy slime ball who suggested they ditch dessert and head back to his basement apartment instead. She checked her watch. 7.23. Shortest date ever. Maddie dropped her phone into her purse and shifted her weight in her heels. She'd even dressed up for the guy. Once she'd turned down his invite, he hadn't even offered to drive her home. Not that she would have accepted. But still, being left standing on the curb stung. She should have known better. So what if her roommates Kate and Darla had both found great guys online? They obviously had better luck with men than she did. Bad relationships just ran in her family. Except for Nana and Pops, of course. But that was different. They had what that movie The Princess Bride called True Love, the kind only one couple in a million found. Good for them, but it seemed the rest of her family lost out on the odds. Chiding herself for the thought, Maddie said a quick prayer for forgiveness. Bitterness wasn't very becoming. Her purse vibrated, and she dug her phone out. A picture of her grandmother's smile caused one of her own. Maddie slid her thumb over the screen and connected. Hey, Nana! She forced more cheer into her voice than the moment warranted, but she didn't want her grandmother to worry on the eve of her big night. How'd your date go? Right to the quick. Maddie cringed. Not as well as I'd hoped. Nana sighed, her breath carrying pity through the phone line. Another dud, huh? Maddie forced a laugh. Guess all the good ones, like Pops, were scooped up a long time ago. Best change the subject before Nana started plotting which of her knitting club pals had a grandson no one had claimed. Do you need me to bring anything for the party tomorrow? A blue economy Honda slowed, and Maddie leaned forward, looking for the logo of the car service. Before she could move, two people bounded out of the sagging restaurant hand in hand and slipped inside. No, Sadie has it all covered. Of course she did. Aunt Sadie practically lived for party planning. Well, if you think of anything, let me know. Another economy car turned off the busy highway bearing the right logo, and Maddie stepped forward. After confirming her ride, she slipped into the back seat. Why don't you come down early, Nana said. You and I can spend a little time together before the party. Warmth tingled through her. Even with her big 65th wedding anniversary, Nana had time for her. Nana always had time for her. 
Maddie didn't want to be a burden, but I'd love to. Thank you. Good. Let's have coffee at seven. See you then. Nana clicked off before Maddie could protest. Seven? Didn't Nana remember Maddie had a three-hour drive to get from her apartment in Madison, Mississippi, to Nana's quaint little house in Ocean Springs on the Gulf Coast? She checked her watch again. 7.46. If she packed quickly enough, she could be on the road by 8.30, nine at the latest. But that would put her at Nana's house at midnight. She did a quick Google search. Probably better find a hotel. The third ad down caught her eye. Huh. She'd never seen that one before. Maddie clicked on the cheery Victorian and read, The Depot. You need something, ma'am? The driver, a clean-cut man in his 50s, if she had to guess, glanced at her in the rearview mirror. No, sorry. Maddie glanced back down at her phone. Step back in time and leave your troubles behind. Cute. She scrolled through the pictures of sweeping porches, a large library, and period-decorated rooms. Why was she even looking at a place like this? She needed to find a cheap motel. The driver made a turn and hit the interstate. But this place was only about a half mile down the same stretch of picturesque beachfront road as Nana's house. That would make her morning easier. She stopped gawking at the pictures and clicked on the link to the room rates. A pop-up block appeared, asking for her name and date to arrive. No required email. At least she wouldn't get spammed just for wanting to know the price of a room. She put in her name and today's date and pressed her finger on the check availability button. The car came to a stop in front of her apartment building and Maddie gave the driver the guest code to open the gate. She opened the rideshare app and gave the quiet man five stars for not bugging her with conversation or weird music. She stepped out and headed up the stairs, her heels clicking. Inside, She dropped her purse on the kitchenette counter and pulled up the B&B again. No way. Anniversary special. Join us for the depot's anniversary weekend and get your room 75% off. Less than 50 bucks for the room? That was some special. Even she could afford that. Maddie placed the call and spoke to a pleasant woman who assured her she had one room available with Maddie's name on it. Even said she'd wait up to check her in. Talk about luck. 20 minutes later, Maddie hit the road. On September 26, 1955, Snow Cloud 5, a U.S. Navy P-2V Neptune weather reconnaissance airplane flying out of Guantanamo, Cuba, was lost in Hurricane Janet, 300 miles southwest of Jamaica. The Snow Cloud 5 flew into the eye wall as Hurricane Janet continued to strengthen. Last transmission, Navy Reconnaissance Flight 5U93, observation number 5, at 1330 GMT. Present weather, light intermittent showers, past weather same, overcast and some scud below. Surface pressure, 1,003 millibars. Surface winds, 050 degrees northeast, 45 knots. Beginning penetration. Nathaniel Hall leaned back in his chair and rubbed his temples. He checked the clock. Almost midnight. He had to report at 0700 tomorrow. He blinked and forced his eyes to focus. Before he could go to bed, he needed to finish this chapter on flights that had been lost to the storms. A light knock sounded on his door. He marked his place, stretching as he crossed the plush carpeting to the door. He opened it to find Mrs. Easley, the lady who ran his temporary home at this B&B, smiling broadly at him. I have another guest arriving soon. She beamed at him as if the news was worth interrupting his studying. Um, that's great, ma'am. He waited, but she said nothing else. Did you need something? She shook her head. Just wanted you to know she'd be coming in late. Room right next to yours. The innkeeper was decidedly odd. But Keesler's temporary lodging had been filled due to all the training going on. Besides, her rates left a nice chunk of per diem in his wallet. Thanks for the heads up. You like music, right? What? Yes, ma'am. Her eyes twinkled. I thought so. I'll 
see you when you get back. With that odd pronouncement, she bounded down the hall with the ease of a much younger woman, her gray hair bouncing. Weird. Nathaniel closed the door and sat at the small antique desk again. Two months of training, and tomorrow he'd take his seven-level exam. Then it would be back to Shepard Air Force Base in Texas. Unless, of course, he was selected to fill the vacancy in the 27th weather recon. He could stick around for some quick house hunting. Short notice transfer orders would give him only 30 days. Not that he had much to move. He pictured a bungalow by the water. Nothing too big. Maybe... He cut the thought short. He had to ace this exam first. Otherwise, all his planning meant nothing. The hurricane hunters. His mother called his goal insane. He called it saving countless lives. Nathaniel focused on his book again. History. Why did the last thing he needed to study have to be history? He rubbed his temples and tried to focus. Hurricane Flossie moved into the Gulf of Mexico as a tropical depression on September 21st, 1956, and became a tropical storm on September 22nd and a hurricane on September 23rd. Hurricane Flossie was the only hurricane to make landfall in the contiguous United States during the 1956 Atlantic hurricane season. Unknown in-flight complications cost the lives of the five-man crew on the B-29 Magnolia Mayhem of the 27th Weather Reconnaissance Squadron. The pilot, Major Robert McBride, and his crew flew into the eye wall at... A door slammed, rattling his focus. What in the world? He shook his head. Must be the woman coming in late. No wonder Mrs. Easley had warned him. She entered like the hurricane he was supposed to be studying. Something bumped on the other side of the thin wall. His senses heightened. Was she okay? Surely no sane or sober human being made that much noise getting settled into a room. He stepped closer to the wall, listening. He didn't want to be weird, listening in on someone. But if something was wrong, another bump, followed by a grunt. He turned to face the wall, and a shimmer of light caught his attention. What in the Sam Hill? The mirror, the same one he checked his reflection in that morning, shimmered like rippling liquid metal. What in tarnation? A feminine voice said through the flickering glass. Nathaniel blinked slowly. Then again. He'd gone way too long without a good night's sleep. Maddie dropped the heavy suitcase, which, thanks to the missing wheel, immediately toppled over and crashed against the wall. She grimaced. She'd probably woken up the entire inn. This place had to be packed with her anniversary weekend special. Probably with a bunch of honeymooners or couples on a weekend getaway. Maddie rolled her eyes. No wonder the woman checking her in had watched her with such interest. She was probably the only single person to book a room on anniversary weekend. She could see why. Pretty place. The floral Victorian wallpaper wrapped the room in a calming light blue, and the heavy wooden furniture accomplished the touted motto of allowing a guest to feel like she'd step back in time. Leaving her troubles behind? Well, that would take a lot more than a fluffy mattress and some antique furniture. Wrangling her suitcase over to reach the zipper, Maddie blew hair up her forehead. Gracious sakes! She was only staying the weekend. Her monstrous suitcase said otherwise. So much for being decisive. She'd thrown half her closet into the bag and figured she'd choose what to wear to the anniversary party later. Carrying the load up the staircase had proved her crippled decision-making skills seriously needed attention. Maddie rifled through the wad of clothes until she'd located a pair of cotton shorts and a loose tank top. Gathering her pajamas under her arm, she slipped off her sandals and headed toward the bathroom. The thick blue rug felt nice under her toes, and she stepped off the softness and onto cool, polished floors. Movement caught her eye. What was that? Her pulse quickened, and Maddie clutched her pajamas tighter. Did something move in that mirror? Ridiculous. She'd only seen herself. Still, it seemed odd. 
she took a step closer. The wavy glass of the old mirror hanging on the wall rippled. No way! She took a step back. She must be more tired than she'd thought. She blinked, and the glass cleared. Yep, time for bed. She started to turn, but her reflection caught her attention again. What in tarnation? Maddie dropped her clothes and stepped closer, enthralled by the strange version of herself staring back at her. She lifted her hand, and the reflection did the same. It was her face. But rather than her hair pulled into a ponytail, the shiny locks had been twisted into two large swoops at her temples. Bright red lipstick parted as her jaw dropped. She fingered her neck, feeling nothing. But the reflection toyed with a set of pearls settled at the base of her throat. Maddie reached forward. So did her reflection. She brushed her fingers along the silver frame. Immediately, white-hot heat seared up her arm. She stumbled, lost her balance, and everything went black. <laughs>